Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, welcome to our video on averages and percents. Uh, now, there's some uh, good news about this video, and that is that uh, both averages questions and percents questions tend to be uh, relatively easy once you know how to handle them, um, which is good news, right? They basically just break down into uh, equations with a single variable, which uh, if you've watched through this entire video series, you definitely know how to handle. Uh, now, for average questions, there's really only one important thing that you need to know, and that is the average formula, uh, which I will put right here. So as you can see, uh, to find the average of anything, all you really need to do is put the sum of all the terms you're, you're trying to take the average of over the number of terms you're trying to take the average of. So say you're trying to find the average of 3, 4, and 5, right? You would just add together 3, 4, and 5 and divide by 3. So 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, uh, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the average of 3, 4, and 5 then is, of course, 4. Um, okay, so the best way to demonstrate this is uh, with a practice problem. So very quickly, let's just go ahead and move into one. So as you can see at the bottom of our screen, our question reads, uh, if the average of 4, 10, 12, and n is 8, what is the value of n? So uh, basically we're given, um, you know, almost all of the things we need to find an average here, right? We're given what the actual average is, right? Um, or I suppose almost all the elements of the average equation, right? Um, so we know that our average is going to ultimately be 8, and that our other numbers uh, that we're dealing with are 4, right? 10, 12, and n, which is the one thing we're going to need to solve for, obviously, right? And we know how many terms that is, because we don't know what n is, we know it's a, it is one term, right? So we know we need to ultimately divide this by 4. So uh, just like any other equation, uh, we're going to deal with it the same way, right? So first let's get rid of that 4, right? So then we're going to have 32 equals, well, 4 plus 10 is 14, and 14 plus 12 is 26, right? So 26 plus n, and very simply, just subtract that 26 out of both sides, subtract that 26 away, and we are going to be left with n equals 6, right? So uh, the answer to our question is 6, and as you can see, average problems are not extraordinarily daunting. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, very similar but slightly different kind of practice problem. Um, so as you can see at the bottom of your screen there, question reads, the average of 60, 80, and 100 is 5 more than the average of 70, 90, and what number, right? Okay, so uh, let's think about how we need to set this up, right? We're setting up two averages, right? So 60 plus 80 plus 100, right, over 3, right, is 5 more than the average of 70, 90, and what number? So we need to subtract from this, of course, 5, right, to make it equal to our other side, because it is 5 more. So to make them equal, we take away 5 from the larger number. Conversely, you could add 5 to the other side, and it would be exactly the same thing, which we may end up doing anyways, but let's go ahead and take a look. So equals the average of uh, 70, 90, and what number? Okay, so it's just going to be very similarly, 70 plus 90 plus uh, a variable, whatever very variable you prefer, most people like x. So let's go ahead and put it in x, right? Okay, again, over 3. So the first thing we're going to want to do is multiply both sides by 3 and get rid of these very pesky 3s at the bottom, right? So multiply that by 3. Multiply this over here by 3, right? Okay. Um, so then we've gotten rid of those 3s. One thing you do need to definitely remember to do is you need to, on this side, distribute that 3 not only to this monstrosity here, right, but to this 5 as well, right? So we're, even, we're left with 60 plus 80 plus 100, which is ultimately going to be 240, right? Okay, so 240, but minus the 15, right? Because remember, we're distributing that 3 to both uh, both terms in this uh, inside this parentheses. Here, and then uh, that's going to equal then 70 plus 90 plus x, right, after these threes cancel um, over here, right, which is then going to be, uh, let's see, so 70 plus 90 is 160, right, plus x. So very simply, uh, to subtract that 15 over there, so 225 equals 160 plus x, subtract 160 from both sides, right, if I could draw zero, of course, that would help, right, 160 minus 160, right, Apologies for my poor handwriting, as always. Uh, and then we're going to be left with x equals uh, 65 would be our remainder there, right? Okay. 65. x equals 65. So now that we've covered uh, the basics of those average problems, uh, let's take a look at some related but much less commonly tested concepts. We'll cover them just very quickly since, uh, you know, you will need to know them. Okay, and those two concepts are median and mode, right? So the median is just the number that appears in the middle of a set. So say we have a set that is, uh, you know, 2, 4, 12, um, 
16 and 28. The number that is directly in the middle of this set would be 12, right? Um, or let's say, uh, let's say you have an even number of terms, right? So let's say we have, make a set that is 1, 7, 9, 10, 25, and 33, right? So this is our set. In this case, what you do with an even number of terms, since there is no middle number per se, the middle of the set is right there, obviously between the 9 and the 10, you take these two numbers and you average them, which we obviously know how to do, right? It would just be 9 plus 10 divided by 2, so 19 divided by 2, which is ultimately going to equal for us 9.5, right? Okay, that is not a 5 at all, but, uh, <laughs> right? 9.5, right? Okay, very good. So if that's a median, a mode is going to be the number that appears most commonly in a set, right? So many sets will not have modes, right? The, set, the two sets that we just discussed didn't have modes because no number appeared more than once in any, either of those sets. Let's say we have a set that is 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5. In this case, you see we have several numbers that appear more than once. We have two twos. We have three threes and we have two fours. Now, because of those three threes are the most common number in the set, that's going to be your mode, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick practice problem that covers median and mode. So as you can see at the bottom of your screen there, we have, uh, we have a question that reads, a store stocks five different brands of chewing gum and sells each at prices of $3, $2.75, $2.25, $3, and $3.25 respectively. What is the positive difference between the median price and the mode price? Um, by positive difference, all that means is that you're going to be subtracting the smaller number from the larger number, right? That we're going to have a positive final answer. So our, our numbers are $3, um, 275 um, excuse me, 225 $3 again, and our final one is going to be 325 okay? So positive difference between median and mode. So very quickly, let's identify our median and mode. Uh, mode is obviously the easiest to figure out because there's only one number that appears here more than once, and that is $3, right? So 3.00, go ahead and put the dollar sign there for good measure, right? Um, because when we're doing calculations, it doesn't really matter. But in real life, it obviously does matter what units we're using. Um, and, okay, so now we've got to put these numbers in order to find our median, right? So we know we have five numbers here. So the third, uh, the third largest, um, or third smallest, however you prefer to consider it, uh, number in this set is going to be our median. So our smallest number is 225, right? Uh, our second smallest number is 275. Ah, very interestingly, our median is also our mode, right? Next number in the set would be 3. So $3 minus $3. So actually a bit of a trick question here. Our positive difference here is actually going to be 0, which is technically not a positive number, but does count as a positive difference because it is no difference, right? Okay, very good. So very simply, that's averages and, of course, very quickly median and mode as well. So let's go ahead and move into percents. Okay, so the most important thing to remember about percents is that they are really just fractions put into a different form, right? Um, so all the, the real formula for, for, for percents, insofar as there is one, is just part over whole, right, times 100%, right? Um, the easiest way to find uh, percents in your calculator is generally just going to be divide a, to divide a part by a whole. And that's going to give you a decimal, right? So say, um, for instance, that we're finding, we're trying to turn the fraction 3 fourths into a percent. Really, you just punch that into your calculator, and that would give you 0.75, right? So all you would do then is you would multiply that by 100% or move your decimals uh, two places, right? So ultimately, then it's going to be 3 fourths is going to be ultimately 75% of one, obviously, right? Um, so really, to find a percent, you can think of it as, as multiplying by 100% if that makes it easier for you. But really, all you're doing is you're taking a decimal and moving the decimal point two places over. Right? Okay, that's great. Okay, so in a variation of the same formula, say you're trying to find x percent of y, right? Um, all you're really going to need to do is multiply x over 100, right, times that y. Okay, so let's think of a quick example. Let's say maybe 15% uh, of 20, right? So that's going to equal then just uh, 15 over 100 times 20, right? Which is, of course, then just going to equal 3. If you plug that into your calculator real quick or use a little uh, mental math, good. Okay, so the final quick uh, percentage formula we need to discuss is the percent change formula. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick practice problem after this to demonstrate it. But um, let's go ahead and just write it out. Percent change 
is always 100% of the time going to be equal to uh, your actual change, right? Like the, the amount something changes over the original amount, right? Probably should extend my division bar there to include that. There we go. Um, okay, and then of course times 100% if you need to think of it that way, right? Um, but again, you're just going to be moving your decimal point over two places. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at a quick practice problem to demonstrate that. Okay, so uh, looking at the question at the bottom of your screen, we see that it reads, a $400 television is on sale for $280. By what percent is this television discounted? Now, that last part of that question is very important because it tells us what exactly we're looking for, right? So if it asked us what percent of the new price, or what is the percent of the new price of the old price, right? We would just do 280 divided by 40. Because it's asking us by what percentage is it discounted, we need to divide the discount by 400, not the new price, right? So if we're trying to find a discount, it would really just be the original price minus the new price, right? Which is going to equal $120 in this case. So then that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide our, our change, right, 120 over our original price of 400, uh, which, assuming I'm doing my mental math correctly, and uh, if we plug it into our calculator, it should give us a 0.3, right? or 0 0.30 if it makes it easier to think about it that way. So again, just moving our decimal point over two places, it's going to equal 30%. That is a 30% discount from the original price. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, one more practice problem. So if you look at the bottom of your screen there, you'll see if the result of increasing P by 150% is Q, what percent of Q is P? So there's actually a little bit of a trick in this question, and that trick is kind of subtle, but it's in the wording, right? So it's the result of increasing P by 150% is Q. So, so we were going to set up an equation for this, right? Um, you would might think we would do um, 1.5 P equals Q, right? Because we're increasing it by 150%, and 150% in decimal form is 0.5. But this is actually not true, right? Because remember, we are increasing P by 100, 150%. So we still have our original P. There's just now 150% more not 150% of the original amount, right? So it's actually going to be that 2.5p equals q, right? Because that is going to include both our original p, right, as well as the 150% increase, right? You have a 1p to begin with, and you increase it by 1.5%. So it's going to be 2.5p that's going to equal q, actually. Uh, now, this actually doesn't really tell us that much. We can't really solve the question from here. The way I'm going to recommend solving questions like this is uh, by a method um, that you might call just uh, choosing numbers, right? Um, just come up with a number that for each one to be. Um, now, a very good number to work with in these cases is going to be any power of 10. So say 10 or 100, because those are very easy to derive fractions for, uh, excuse me, percents from, right? So let's say that, um, let's say that if Q is, um, let's just say if P is 100, right? Um, let's just say 2.5 times 100, right, um, equals Q, then we can solve for what Q would be in the situation that in which P was 100, right? So 2.5 times 100 is then going to be 250, right? So our Q equals 250. So what percent of Q is P? We're going to use the formula that we just learned a minute ago. And that is our X percent of Y formula, right? Which is really just, in this case, is going to be our P percent of Q, right? So it's just going to be P over 100 times Q, right? So if, uh, let's say that uh, P was, uh, in this case it was 100, right? Okay, so it was going to be uh, 100 over 100, which is really just 1, right, times 250. That is the value we found for Q in this situation, right, in this hypothetical scenario, right? So 1 times anything, right, is ultimately just going to be that number, right? So it's going to equal 250. Right, so we kind of already solved this in a sense, right? If you if you look back here logically, that has to be our answer, um, turned into percent form obviously back there, right? But uh, you, we can still use our formulas to double check our work, and we're going to find that in this case it is indeed going to be two hundred and fifty percent, right? Um, which again is logical if you think about it. Okay. All right, so that's all on. Uh, averages and percents, like I said, um, relatively easy compared to other things. Just got to know a few formulas. Uh, and work logically. Um, so, hope you'll turn in for our next video, which is going to be sets, sequences, and probability.